Hey everyone, I just finished installing the Aerosport product NACA vent valve kit um, and the rest of the system that's going to supply air to the overhead console in the plane uh, and I'd like to show you all how I did that. Um, here is the system as a whole. It's kind of hard to get a shot where you can see everything all at once but it's this is the actual Aerosport product valve and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, the first thing I had to do is we have to cut NACA vents on the side skins right behind the baggage door and then one on the other side. Uh, the best way to do that is you can just make a template out of the existing NACA vent cutouts that are in the front fuse skins. Uh, and then all these parts with the exception of the valve were ordered from Vans. They seem to have the best price on all these parts uh, from the NACA vent backers there to the two inch scat tube uh, to the two inch scat, I don't know, adapters, what you'd call them. Um, so basically we've got the knack events cut out. The backers are just taped in place now until I can get a chance to mix some, up some pro seal and get those glued on permanently. The two inch duct just kind of runs up. I've got uh, a zip tie holding that up so it'll kind of be out of the way against the skied skin once everything's done there. Uh, the tube then runs forward and into the Aerosport Products NACA vent valve. And what that is, is basically a pair of aluminum tubes uh, that are connected together with a couple of pieces of aluminum there. And what they have is, actually let me pull this off so you can see through that there, is a butterfly valve on the inside. And as the servo in the middle turns, That'll either close the butterfly or open the butterfly. Um, same thing happens over here, and they're in in, in synchronization there. So, uh, what that allows me to do is, on a hot day when I want maximum flow, I can crank it, get a lot of airflow through there. Um, the dual knack events are going to provide a lot of airflow, uh, and that will feed feed this and then into the overhead and, and blow down on the uh, passengers. Uh, the the great benefit to this though is I live in Minnesota and it can get really cold and if you don't have that there you're gonna have that high pressure air up in the overhead whether you want it or not so this is gonna allow me to to basically shut that system down I'm gonna have a knob on the on the the, the console there that's gonna allow me to control that um, and even on warm days you know you might want to just slow the air down a little bit so you get more of a, you know, a volume of air coming at you instead of a high pressure blast. Make things a little more comfortable. Uh, and if you want to see that from the bottom, you can see kind of how all the linkage works there. It's a little tricky to see with all the lighting I've got going on here, but uh, basically servo turns and activates both of these uh, control horns, turn the butterfly valves. Yeah, so. That's working great. Oh, the way I mounted that is I actually reused one of the, this is one of the stock Vans fuel pump brackets. Normally this would be mounted like this um, inside the tunnel and then the, the fuel pump goes to that, but I went with an aftermarket system there. And what I found is this actually works great as a bracket to basically uh, rivet on there and then I've got a couple of nut plates and screws that go right down into that back piece there and it holds it real nice and secure and it's simple and I'll even have room to get up there and uh, rivet the top skin on when I'm ready to do that so so that worked really well and then from there we run another short piece of two inch scat tube up to the uh, little two inch uh, adapters. Um, these are also from Vans. They're by far the cheapest place for all that stuff. Um, what I did for placement, if you want to look from the front here, is we got two of them right on either side of that center post. Um, the the pilot side one, uh, we just I just put it in there, almost tight up against the uh, flange of the center post. Uh, I'm sharing the rivet hole with this nut plate here, so I'll just put a uh, you know, I'll rivet through there and then more right there. Uh, on the other side, I did it just a little bit differently because the space 
uh, worked on differently. I stole an idea from Bob Leffler. He had uh, some good pictures on his site and it was actually a really good idea. And that was just to push this all the way tight, or not all the way tight, but uh, closer here. But then the trick was that, let's see if we can see this. Um, to make it fit around the existing nut plate there, you can just cut out some of the flange of the, the adapter and it, you just cut out that, you leave enough of an ear for the rivet hole there and it, it fits perfectly. And then you can see that from the front. Um, there are, when the overhead vent is on, it's going to cover up, you know, all of this here. And it's actually going to cover these two nut plates. Uh, those would normally hold the, uh, the upper back cover there. <clears throat> um, I'll probably won't even end up using those. You, know, you can just slide that back cover up underneath the, the overhead console, which is going to be tight against there. And it probably won't even be an issue there. So, uh, yeah, once those were drilled in place, I just cut through, marked, marked the spots, cut those out, and uh, it's going to work well, I think. Let's see if I can get some more pictures of how everything's laid out there. So, yeah, one more thing off the list.